This is a brand new Avilia Ferlante SLR Aero road bike launched by Italian company today. What do you think, Ali? What do you think of this new bike? She's not bothered. Okay, let's dive in and take a closer look. So as you can tell, I don't have my hands on the bike yet, but there is one coming my way very soon. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see my review on this bike. But until then, do you want to run through the details on the bike and tell you what's important about the bike and give my reaction to this new bike being launched today. So the Philante is an aero road bike and replaces the company's previous Cento 10 Air and Pro bikes, the previous aero focus bikes and designed to bridge the gap between the aero bike and their super lightweight the Zero SLR, which you might have seen on my channel a few weeks ago. Link above if you missed that. Now the headline figure for the bike is a low claimed frame weight of 870 grams and a 360 gram fork. That compares to about 780 grams for that Zero SLR. So less than 100 gram difference between the company's lightest lightweight road bike and their new aero optimized road bike. And that narrowing of that gap between an aero bike and a lightweight bike is really the interesting thing in the road bike market at the moment. We saw Specialized totally ditch their Venge aero bike and replace it with the Tarmac, their lightweight and now aero all-round bike. And I think we're getting to a point where this distinction between an aero bike and a lightweight bike is going to disappear completely and they become one bike. So both lightweight and aero and this Volante SLR is a step in that direction but they still have their Zero SLR if weight is everything to you. But if you want aero with the smallest weight penalty, and we're talking about 90 grams here, which isn't much. So you can have an aero optimized bike for going fast, but also have a lightweight bike for going up mountain climbs. So the best of both worlds. As you can tell, the bike has to be wind tunnel tested, but interestingly, there's no data available on how a bike compares either to their current flagship road bikes or other rivals in this space. We normally get data around how much faster it is at 40 km per hour and all that sort of jazz, but nothing here. So we'll have to take their word for it that it is a fast bike. But as I said earlier, I will be riding the bike in a few weeks time. So I'll give my verdict on the bike when I get my hands on it. It certainly looks fast, but will it be fast? Well, time will tell on that one. So how have they tried to make it as fast as possible? Well, looking at the bike, there are some interesting details I can point you to. The first interesting detail, and one we've seen a few manufacturers dabble with, is increasing the space between the fork blades and the front wheel to improve the amount of space for air to go through between the frame and the wheel, and also at the rear stays, which are lower, like we're seeing on most road bikes. But what's really interesting is how they've lined up the rear stays with the fork blades to give essentially a clear passage of air to flow between the front fork and the wheel and the rear stays and the rear wheel to give that uninterrupted channel of air which should, according to the company, decrease drag over their previous design. And that's something we've seen on a few other bikes. Quite a few brands have dabbled with a fork blade that's wider compared to a conventional fork. And the most radical interpretation of this new trend in aero design, because I think it will be a new trend, it's a Hope track bike, which I got to see last year. There's a link down below if you want to see that on another channel. But a radical design where they've also moved the fork blades and the rear stays away from the wheels, but done it with this kind of channel, this uh, box section you can draw around them to let air flow down the side of the bike. Oh, <laughs> I don't think Ali's too impressed with it, but we'll carry on. So that's interesting, but also interesting are the improved tube profiles. So they're loosely based on a truncated aero profile on the previous Cento 10, but they rounded off the trailing edge and the idea there to improve the range of your angle the bike performs at. Now your angle is a familiar term of aero bikes and it's basically the direction of wind. So straight ahead is zero degrees and then five, 10, 15, 20. So what Villier have tried to do is ensure the bike is good not only in a straight line with that zero degree your angle, but also in a wide range of your angles that you get in the real world, where crosswinds are a very real presence, especially where I live in the Cotswolds. Uh, they're pretty bad at times with low hedgerows. So ensuring the tube profile deliver a wide your angle of aerodynamic performance should make it better in the real world and also in the pro peloton. We're seeing lots of bike design in the wind tunnel, which are great in the wind tunnel, but out in the real world, they don't perform so well. And I've ridden some aero bikes in the past that are pretty scary. <laughs> pretty hairy in a crosswind, really catches you out. So hopefully this is something that the Philante SLR will perform well in, in real world uh, conditions where there are lots of crosswinds and winds coming from different angles and you're riding at a wide range of speeds. Some other important details, 
It's disc brakes only, I'm afraid. There is no rim brake option at all, as we saw with a Zero SLR launch a few months ago. So Villiers is clearly putting all his eggs in the disc brake basket. All the pro riders are using the disc brake version of his bikes because that's what it makes. But whether his customers are on board with that, well, from the information I'm hearing, disc brakes are massively outselling rim brakes. So let me know what you think in the comment section below, basically. Have they missed a trick by not offering a rim brake version or is it just the way the market is going? To manage the disc brake forces, they design an asymmetric fork and essentially the fork profile is bigger on the disc brake side than the drive side to stop it twisting under load when you're braking heavily into a you know, stop zone. Just make sure there's no twisting, which you don't want. All the wires and the hoses are internally rooted using their one piece carbon fiber handlebar, which offers a wide range of adjustment, both stem length, handlebar width, and also easy stack adjustment using spaces, which you can remove really easily. So the hoses and the wires, I guess they cables then, but no cables. Hoses and wires go into the head tube. And naturally we have an internal seat clamp, but thankfully, they smoothed off the nubbin compared to what we had on the Zero SLR. So they've clearly been listening to your feedback on the comment section and they've made it nice and smooth, nice seamless design. Good work, Vilja. The company also talks about how it's improved the stiffness to weight ratio. So you want, in a perfect world, a frame that's as light as possible, but as stiff as possible to get that stiffness to weight ratio up as much as you can. And that's something that all pros want. Villiers sponsored two pro teams this year. Uh, next year, are they sponsored two pro teams? I'm not sure. But all the pros, all the feedback they get from pros are usually in the order of, can you make the frame stiffer, as stiff as possible? And that's what Villiers will have tried to do, make it as stiff as possible. So an easy way to make that stiffness to weight ratio better is to lower the weight of the frame. So that stiffness to weight ratio goes up and that's what they try to achieve with the new Philante SLR. So a very nice looking bike, but big question, how much does it cost? Well, it's Villiers, it's Italian, it's not cheap, and cheap it certainly isn't. Here in the UK, prices for a complete bike start at just under seven and a half thousand pounds and go all the way up to nearly 12,000 pounds. But as we saw with the Zero SLR, there will likely be a Philante SL version launched probably next year, which will bring all the technology and aero design to a more affordable price point using a low grade carbon fiber and hopefully design around a mechanical group set so there will be cheaper bikes available in the future, no doubt. But for now, seven and a half thousand pounds is the uh, entry barrier to the new Philante SLR. So that is a Philante SLR. No idea when it's available, probably due to COVID-19 there can be delays, but I've got one coming its way very soon, so make sure you subscribe to my channel if you wanna find out what I think of this exciting new bike. But first impressions are that it's a really good looking bike to my eyes. It looks really fast. I like some of the design, some of that attention to detail and the fact of design for a wide range of wind conditions. And I like the fact it's super lightweight, nearly as light as that Zero SLR. And if it rides anything in life as well as that Zero SLR, I think it can be a really exciting bike. So very lightweight, but also aero optimized. And if you like riding fast and if you're racing, you definitely want an aero bike. But before now, aero bikes are meant to weight penalty, but now we're getting to the point where you can have your aero, you have your lightweight, and you have your cake and eat it. So an exciting future. So I leave you with one question. Is this a lightweight aero bike, the future of the modern road race bike? Will we see aero bikes and lightweight bikes all merge into one? Or is there still a place for a super lightweight bike, like a Specialized Athos? and a dedicated aero bike which is designed to be as light as possible but with a big weight pound too. What do you think? Love to hear your thoughts on this interesting topic in the road cycling market going forward. So let me know down below. That's all for now. Make sure you subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed watching it, follow me on Instagram and I'll see you all again next time. So thank you from me, thank you from Ali for watching and I'll see you again soon.